became aware of Dr. Jill Accord's writing a couple of years ago when reading her piece in the New Yorker about Sarah Palin's infinite visit to the Old North Church. You know the one where Carolyn had Paul Revere shooting the guns and ringing the bells. <laughs> Jill's attempt to straighten out that rather mangled history caught the essence of the challenge we face here at Old North every day. Shortly after that piece appeared, Dr. LaFord began poking around the front house on the rear of our campus, doing research for her forthcoming book, Book of Ages, The Life and Opinions of Jane Franklin. You see, Jane Franklin Meekum lived another, in another house built by Ebenezer Clock in what is now our rear courtyard. Here at Old North, we are delighted to learn more about one of the more noteworthy residents on our campus. Even if Jane attended Dr. Lathan's Old North meeting house rather than her own Old North church. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Jill LaFord, David Woods Kimper, 41, Professor of American History, Harvard College Professor, and Chair of Harvard's History and Literature Program. Boys were talking. 
Benjamin thought this was unjust, and he taught his little sister, his best friend, how to write. That she could write as well as she could. It was really only because she was Franklin's sister. And the tragedy for Jane Franklin was that her brother, who was also her tutor, ran away when he was 17, and she was only 11. And that's when her lessons ended. Franklin ran away from Boston and almost never returned. But the first letter he wrote home four years later, he wrote to Jane. He wrote to her all his life. He wrote more letters to her than he wrote to anyone. Think of the number of correspondents Benjamin Franklin had. He lived in London and Paris. He lived in Philadelphia. He wrote more letters to his sister than he wrote to anyone. He loved no one longer. She loved no one better. Jane never ran away. She would never be able to do such a thing. She wouldn't have broken her father's heart in that way. Franklin's life was rags to riches. It is the original American rags to riches story. It's a beautiful story. Jane's life is rags to rags. Franklin became a printer, a philosopher, a statesman. Jane Franklin became a wife, a mother, and a widow. She lived in Boston all her life. Until that night, on April 18, 1775, the night that Paul Revere rode to Lexington, the night that the British marched out of Boston and headed to Lexington and Concord. Jane Franklin was by then 63 years old. She lived a block from where she was born. She had married at the age of 15. She had given birth to 12 children. Nine of them had died when they were young. Another who died when we sustained at the Battle of Bunker Hill. One more son who disappeared at the Battle of Trenton. The Revolutionary War left Jane only a daughter, another Jane. Jane hadn't wanted war to come. She was opposed to war. She was terrified of the British soldiers. She was terrified of living in Boston all those years when the British Army occupied the city. But she was an ardent supporter of American independence. She believed what her brother believed. She wrote to him often about politics. She had very, very strong political views. Like other patriots in Boston, she spent that night in war. She could hear from her house in Boston. She could hear the fighting started in Lexington. Everyone in the city was terrified after the view. Like everyone knew what was happening. You could see, you could hear, you could smell. What she feared, what most Bostonians who were loyal to the cause or independence feared, was being stuck in the city with the British Army to be caught behind enemy lines. That night marked the beginning of the fighting, the shot her around the world, the war that had begun. What happened after that, and what happened after that was that anyone who was stuck in Boston was desperate to escape. It was very hard to get out of the city because the British were already beginning to hold the siege. As soon as she could, Jane packed what she could from her little house, and she escaped. She wrote a letter to her brother on May 14, 1775 telling him how she had managed to get out of the city of Boston in April, where she had gone. And that's the letter I'd like to read to you. It's full of outrage and pride and courage and love. My ever dear and much honored brother, your last letter advised me to keep up my courage and told me that foul weather does not always last in any country. But I believe you did not then imagine the storm would have risen so high as the general gauge has sent out a party to creep in the night and slaughter our dear brethren for endeavoring, endeavoring to defend their own property. She told them that the colonials had prevailed in the way because God had appeared for us and drove the British back with such, with much greater loss than they were willing to own. Their countenances as well as their confessions showed that they were much mistaken in the people they, the people they had to deal with. But oh, my dear brother, the distress of this occasion is past my description. The horror in Boston, when the battle approached within hearing, we expected they would proceed quite into town. The commotion, the town was entered in after the battle ceased by the parties coming in and they brought in their wounded men. It caused such an agitation of mind, I believe none had sleep for nights. Since which we have had no quiet, as we understood our brother without were determined to dispossess the town of the regulars. And the journal shut up the town, not letting any pass out, but through such great difficulties as were almost insupportable. Jane Franklin's ride was different from Paul Revere's ride. She couldn't ride a horse, for one thing. She was a woman, she couldn't travel alone, for another. She also wouldn't have traveled alone, because the whole point of getting out of the city was to bring with you, to save, to rescue the people that you loved, so that they wouldn't be trapped in the city of Boston. 
with a British army. Jane found her granddaughter, another Jane, and together they loaded what they could from her little house into a cart and hitched it to an ox, and they made their way as slowly as they could out of the city in chaos. She stopped, she was a good neighbor, she stopped and brought with her an elderly neighbor, Mrs. Abigail Boyle, who was too ill to get out of the city on her own. This slowed them and made it more difficult for them to escape. It was a risk to take, but Jane was willing to take it. They went first to Cambridge. Jane explained to her brother, my poor little delicate neighbor, Mrs. Boyle, and her family came out with me, not knowing where she should find a place. I left them at Cambridge in the most shocking, disagreeable place, but I sense here she has gone to Worcester. Jane didn't want to stay in Cambridge. She didn't want to go to Worcester. I take offense to both of these things because I'm a Cambridge resident and I'm a Worcester native. <laughs> Jane Franklin's house was demolished, and Jane Franklin's drive was forgotten. 
She was proud that it is until tonight. When I let it in, we are lighting these lanterns for her. Thank you. Oh, 